today I wanted to um, explain to the patients a little more about colonoscopies. Not everybody's favorite topic, but um, you've had some experience with that. And I introduce you first of all. This is my son, David, and he has had some colonoscopies. Yeah. So um, tell them a little bit about um, your experience, you know, at the beginning, what happened, and, and that sort of thing. Sure. So um, I was diagnosed with colon cancer about five years ago, and um, after my uh, initial uh, surgery and, and uh, sort of getting through that experience, I get a colonoscopy every year after that. And then I switched to every other year now for the next couple years. Okay, so this is colonoscopy for the purpose of surveillance, for the purpose of checking up on on a uh, cancer that's already happened. And they do it sometimes for ulcerative colitis, things that aren't cancer too, but that's a surveillance type colonoscopy. Okay, but what happened at the initial time when, when before you had your very first one? Can you tell us how, how you came to ask for your first colonoscopy? Yeah, um, so I actually asked for it myself. Um, I was traveling uh, in Germany at the time and I noticed that uh, my stool, my poop, uh, had uh, blood in it. Yeah. And um, it looked like a sort of a dark, oily um, blood. Mm -hmm. It looked really strange. I was uncomfortable with it. And I talked to my doctor about it. Um, and he said to me, we think it's just... Uh, Hemorrhoids. Hemorrhoids, that's right, yeah. We think it's just hemorrhoids. Yeah. And I, I, I was lucky. I was ex extremely lucky. Um, I had a friend at the time uh, who had been diagnosed with colon cancer about a year before. And I know that that's one of the symptoms that he had seen. Mm -hmm. And so I pushed really hard on my doctor and said, I, I, I'm not comfortable with that. I don't think that's true. And I think I remember talking to you on the phone and you asked me, is it dark and oily or is it bright red? And, and I said, no, no, it's, it's like sort of dark and I'm sorry, I'm being like way too graphic. <laughs> no, that's okay. That's okay. <laughs> um, I but, mean, it does make a difference, you know, what it looks like. Yeah. So yeah. it was like this dark, oily blood that was like all the way through um, the stool. Yeah, that's this. a good point. So if you just have a little bit of blood after the stool or in your toilet paper, yeah, that can be hemorrhoids, especially if it's bright red and stuff. But we listen for and ask for and say, you know, is it um, actually mixed in? And then that says, mm, that's coming from higher up, you know? Right. So I, I talked to my doctor more and I sort of pushed him on it and I said, look, especially given the experience that my friend has had, um, I'm not comfortable with this. And I pushed him and pushed him and he finally said, okay, fine, I'll give you a sigmoidograph. Is that the right word? Sig sigmoidoscopy. Sigmoidoscopy um, to, to, to make you feel better. And so, so we, I, we went and we did the, we, we did the sigmoidoscopy and um, that only goes up to the first, the first bend. It, it goes, yeah, up the, the left side to or... the first big bend. Yeah. You know, it goes past a couple little bends and then up to the first big bend. Yeah. Right. So they did that, and then at one inch before they would have finished the the sigmoidoscopy, mm -hmm. um, they found my colon cancer, mm -hmm. and it was about uh, the size of an egg, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. it was um, uh, sort of this blocking the majority of my um, uh, my stool. Your colon. Uh, my yeah. colon. Mm -hmm. At that point in time, so at that point, kind of like a, like one of those Play-Doh machines, <laughs> my poop was coming out and it was flat. <laughs> okay, yeah, it was, had to go around there. That's very, yeah, that's and, common. Yeah. Um, uh, so, so then, sort of, that put everything the gears in motion, and then wanted to do more tests and mm -hmm. figure out what it was and things like that. But I was super lucky. One, that I pushed so hard and just didn't take his his, his reasoning that this mm -hmm. was hemorrhoids, um, and then two, I was lucky because it was before when the sigmoidograph would have ended. Because, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. wow. Yeah, so a couple of points here. But first first of all, how old were you? Uh, I was 36 at the time. Yeah, I think you I think you had it diagnosed like a few days before your 36th birthday. Yeah. Because, um, so David had, you know after you have a, a scope, they give you these pictures of what's inside. And he took a picture, he took a picture of it, and sent me a picture. He texted me a picture of his colon cancer. And I was working. I was seeing patients. I was in between patients. I said, oh, let's see what this says on the phone. And, and his caption was, um, is this bad? <laughs> and, you know, we can laugh now because we're over the five-year mark and yep. you're officially cured. Yep. Right? So we can laugh about it a little bit. But, yeah, that's bad. You know, so your son sends you a picture of colon cancer. Anyway, 
the, the point I wanted to make here is that you were 35 years old when you were having your symptoms. Yep. And we normally screen for colon cancer starting at 50, uh, or at that time it was, but there's some new guidelines that I'll also get to as well. So uh, we would normally ask people uh, for uh, to have a colonoscopy done or some kind of colon cancer screening done at about age 50. And so that's why, you know, his doctor and lots of doctors would have been saying, oh yeah, you're way too young for that. But you know, after you had got treated and we were, of course, looking all over the internet, we found lots of people in their 20s even who have had colon cancer. So yep. um, if you have symptoms of uh, bleeding, uh, in the uh, bleeding in your stool, um, talk to your doctor about it. Some of it will be just hemorrhoids. Um, and we can't go into anything that would presume to give you advice for your particular situation. But um, if you have bleeding, uh, if you have like a big change in, in your habit of stool for uh, a particular period of time, for a significant period of time, um, yeah, you need to have it checked out. Don't just um, scoot it under the carpet um, because it can happen when you're younger. Um, so your sigmoidoscope that scope that found it was not a screening scope. No. That was a diagnostic scope. So something had happened and the doctors decided to find a diagnosis by using that. Okay. But I'll just take, um, address our, our people now for a moment and saying screening means that you have no symptoms at all. Okay, so people do, we do want people to start screening for colon cancer to start looking for even though you have no change in your habits, no change, no, no um, uh, blood and uh, we want you to start, now they're saying it's probably right to start at 45. Okay, so we can't go all the way back to like 20 because there are consequences to doing colon there's, there's, there's dangers, right? There's right. a danger of perforation of mm -hmm. the colon. Mm -hmm. um, I, I will say though, um, to add on to what you're saying about, about when to start screening, um, like now that I've had my colon cancer at 35, um, my kids are going to have to start their screening at 25, 10 years before when mine appeared. Exactly. So if you have a, if you have a history of colon cancer, then your screening time will start a lot earlier, or it should start a lot earlier. You should probably let your doctor know if you have a history. If the family has a history, yeah. Not even yourself, but your Sorry, family, yeah. yeah. Family. Right, exactly, exactly. So you're right, it's 10 years before uh, whenever your relative, whatever age they were when, when they got it. Um, so that's screening, you know, not for the general population, but for people with a family history. And then screening's different again for people with ulcerative colitis or Crohn's disease. You know, screening is different if they're, if you're not at average risk, you know. But if you are at average risk, probably start at 45. And you know, it doesn't have to be with a colonoscopy. There's a whole list of things. And if you choose to screen with, say, one of the stool tests, you know, you can take a sample of your stool and send it in, it flies through the mail somewhere and lands somewhere. <laughs> And people look at it and, and so there's three different tests that can be done with that. There's the, like the regular old Guayac um, test for blood and um, so I, I tell people you have to do this to see if there's blood in the stool and they say oh, I don't have any blood in the stool. It's hidden blood, it's occult blood, thing, blood you can't see. So they do a chemical test for it and if it's positive then they say you need a colonoscopy. right? So. And you know, the Cancer Society says that's fine. You know, doing it with the little stool samples is, is adequate. It's, it's, the only problem with it is, you know, you can't be in there actually taking the samples, you know. But you can do that. Um, there's, and so when, when you go to screen at average risk, the test you choose will tell you how often. So the, the stool sample, like I told you that one, and the one with immunofixation, which is the more modern one, um, those ones should be done yearly after 45. But then there is one that's with DNA that's a little more fancy and um, it's looking for DNA from the cancer. That can be every three years. 
Um, and colonoscopy is every 10 years if you have like a real clean, a clean slate. They look all the way through there, I didn't find anything. Um, but I wanted to address something that is a little bit of a problem in just, in just getting them done properly at the right time. And that is, um, I get people, new patients to me, I've never seen their records before, and they said, oh yes, I had a colonoscopy five years ago, and I don't need one until 10 years, or something like that. And I'll say, did they find any polyps? And they said, oh yes, but they're benign. And then I start thinking, okay, there's benign polyps that are just like a little skin tag like you might have on your face, you know? Sure, that would be 10 years. But there are benign polyps that are possibly precancerous polyps. And the um, when you have the next one done depends on your results from the first one. So if somebody comes to me and they say, you know, I had my colonoscopy done four years ago and it was fine. Yes, there were polyps, but they were benign. They'll say, oh, I have the results, I'll bring them to you. And they bring me these pretty pictures of the insides of their colon with little, you know, bumpies here and there perhaps. But no pathology results. And I have to say to them, you need the pathology results. And so it's kind of a bone I have to pick with gastroenterologists. When you give pe people the pretty pictures, you got to give them the pathology results as well. So that the rest of us, when they change insurance for some reason, that we know how often to do it. If they get through and they say, oh yeah, I only had three polyps, but they were tubular adenomas, they'll say, you need to do it in like two years or three years or something like that, depending on what the guidelines are at the time. So there's benign, and then there's mm, benign, but, you know, but verify, you know, <laughs> verify with another colonoscopy, yeah. So tell me about preparation for colonoscopies. This is the big thing people talk about when they, when they say, "Oh, I don't want to do that." Oh yeah, I've had, I've had this conversation with a bunch of my my coworkers because now after you tell your story about colon cancer, um, your coworkers tend to say, "Oh, I, sh I should go get my colonoscopy done. Oh, I should I should get that done." So I've had I've had this conversation a couple times, and I, I, in my experience, the colonoscopy is not nearly as big of a deal as people will say that it is. Um, uh, so the preparation they give you a little. Um, uh, a packet of um, a drug that helps you uh, go to the bathroom. Mm -hmm. It basically gives you diarrhea for 12 hours, um, but but without the stomach cramps, right? Right. So Good. it's yeah. not like it's not like you feel sick. It's just that you got to go to the bathroom a lot. <laughs> but uh, so it's it's you sort of chug this uh, chalky liquid, and um, you take you know like two liter bottles of this chalky liquid, and um, you you go to the bathroom a lot over the next you know, six, six hours. Mm -hmm. um, and then you, 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 you wake up in the next morning and you don't eat any food until you do your colonoscopy and you're fine. Mm -hmm. it's, it's super, super easy. Good. Well, in my experience, you know, you, of course I've had a couple as well. And I, um, uh, I, I go there and then they say, you know, we're going to start your IV now, and then I open my eyes a few minutes later, and I say, "When are you going to start?" And it's all over. You know? my, my experiences are not like that. I, okay. They, they say that you don't remember the like. They say like you're in a state of dream or sort of like a like a dream, mm -hmm. and then you wake up, and then you basically forget. It's like a roofie. <laughs> Isn't it the same drug? No. Um, yes. I, actually, I shouldn't say that; it'll scare people. I think I'm it actually is. not sure what what I, <laughs> I, I'm not. You know, I don't know. Uh, what but the but is. In, in, in any case, uh, they say that you you know it gives you temporary amnesia and you won't remember. I I do remember spots of every colonoscopy I've had, and I usually say something totally inappropriate to the, to, the, to the doctor working on me. Yeah, yeah, you say I, yeah. My um my 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 current my current doctor is a uh, is a Navy doctor. Yeah, comes from uh comes from the Navy, uh, retired. And uh, I was I was under the table, and he's he's like doing the whole colonoscopy on me, and, <laughs> and, I, and I say, so Navy, huh? <laughs> in in the middle of what he's doing this, <laughs> yeah. And I'm like I'm like a lot of boats in the Navy, <laughs> and he like with a completely straight face goes, we call them ships. <laughs> <laughs> but but it's like, like I don't remember any pain or any discomfort. I just remember that like you remember the jokes. I remember some jokes yeah. every now and then. But it's it, um, okay. 
you know, I, I know one other question I should ask. Mm -hmm. um, so I've had several friends who have gotten colonoscopies over the last couple of years, and it's not always because of the same reasons or the same the, the same impetus that I did. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes, um, uh, but they but but it's always because they've, they've seen something that seemed uncomfortable, and um, and have gone and gotten them. And what are the other things that people should be looking for besides occult blood? Um, for example, one of my friends um, was diagnosed with colitis. Right. And he found that by um, uh, feeling really, really sluggish and, um, and, and having a it sort of like felt sort of a tightness in his stomach a lot. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, but what are the other things that people should look at for, um, for getting a colonoscopy besides occult blood? Well, pain, abdominal pain. Um, actually, we probably, again, here we go back to, you know, you have to hear the whole history and everything because everybody's is a little different, but, but we often would get a, um, a CAT scan for abdominal pain, say, initially, rather than going straight to colonoscopy since it's a lot more invasive. But uh, yeah, abdominal pain, um, change in bowel habit. So, you know, I was always just fine, I was always just fine. My diet didn't change, my lifestyle didn't change, and all of a sudden, you know, things are really, you know, it's hard to go. It's, it's hard to come up with the same number of BMs, and things are feeling kind of uncomfortable. So just vague things like that, you know. But, um, and your doctor will probably, uh, their fuse will be shorter if you're older and they'll want to maybe try a few things if you're like 20 you know because it's more likely it's it's um, statistically a lot more likely to be um, uh, you know irritable bowel or something like that but um, ulcerative colitis and Crohn's disease it's going to be that's going to be pain they're going to have some blood as well but the feeling sluggish bit is a, a good example we have people coming in who feel sluggish and we find out they're anemic and if they have iron deficiency anemia and you know a, a guy is supposed to have a hemoglobin of 14 if you walk in and your hemoglobin's like 10 or 9 or something even though that's okay for living um, we start to say where are you losing it from if it's iron deficiency anemia that you've actually lost the iron somewhere where did it go it's most likely going out through your GI system. So it could be bleeding ulcer at the top, you know, are you drinking alcohol, are you taking too much ibuprofen, or is it something all the way down through the rest of your bowels, like celiac disease can make you anemic, but we pick up a lot of colon cancers because you can't see the blood if it's just from the right side and it's just a drip, 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 little bit of a drip over a long period of time, your hemoglobin can get really low and you can get tired and things like that. So yeah, there's a, a few other things that would make us think it necessary to do a colonoscopy. Thank you, Dave, for helping me get started on my, my little channel. Um, appreciate it. Yeah, of course. <laughs> Pleasure. <laughs>